Should we do the review? Yeah, let's do it. What we're reviewing? The Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking by Roger Waters. Yes, by Dave Gilmore. <laughs> oh! Oh! Well, you can't. Has a reflection, you can't. Mm. Yeah, you go, you can make the it at the bottom. There's a bottom. This. <laughs> and it is a real bottom, although it looks like a drawing. It is actually a real bottom. This one, this is obviously, uh, we all know Roger Waters. It's actually the third one, isn't it? But it's his first solo album, 1984. I never really got into it. Um, of his solo albums, this one I got into the least. I know the least. Um, so, in a way, I've never really given it that much of a chance, or as much as you would expect from from a Roger Waters album. Obviously, I know it, and I can't help but think a lot of the criticism of it is context. Expectation is a prison, etc. This is, you know, it's the next one, isn't it? After after the final cut, which was after the wall. And if we've heard this in in isolation, now oh, there's this this album. I'm sure we we'd be we'd be really really singing its praises I'm, I'm, I'm sure but to get into it actually I discovered that, that they've released the live version um, which has been on bootleg for ages but we only had the the Floyd songs from the live show not the pros and cons so we've now got the pros and cons as well um, and that's great uh, I mean that's that's what happened to me with the lamb as well I didn't really properly get into the lamb until I got um, the archive box set um, yeah, so we know the the story. It's his third album, really, because the you know and and it was written and demoed at the same time as the Wall. So it's it's first or second album, kind of. It's not a patch on the final cut, let alone the Wall. He did say it's been changed a lot since he wrote it in seventy seven or seventy eight. But it does sound to me like he's he reused stuff from that. After he'd written it on the wall in the final cut, I, I suspect it was originally here. And it was so it's actually the other way around. Um, the main theme sounds really familiar, but I don't think it's from anything. I think it's just another Ro Roger Waters melody that that's there. <laughs> um, some of it is excellent. Every stranger's eyes is great. Better live. Uh, and particularly later when he did it with Andy Fair with Hello instead of Clapton, actually. Um, there's a couple of famous people on it, so you've got, you've got Clapton and you've also got Mel Collins. Uh, I think the concept is great. It is a great concept, smart for the time, much more suited to the 80s than uh, the final cut, which is really out of place in the 80s when all the bands were just making bland albums and selling out. You know, so the, what is the concept? Uh, a man is having a, a dream... And he sleeps in real time from 4.30 till 5.11 a.m. And he he basically dreams about hitchhiking, gets off with a woman. Uh, and then he realises he's cheated on his wife and then his wife leaves him. And then then he goes fishing. I think he actually goes fishing. I don't think that's a euphemism. Um, in the wilderness. And then that's it, I think. <laughs> I don't think there's much, that much more to it. Yeah, uh, so I think it's sort of, yeah, it's like the middle midlife crisis thing in it. Yes, I mean, he's sort of like he's kind of regretting he's he's with this one woman. Maybe don't know. And yes, he's sort of he's playing through it in his mind when he's when he's asleep, sort of thing. What would happen if he cheated on her? I think or something like that. Yes, yes, and that's interesting. I mean, obviously, he's not had his midlife crisis yet. Um, although he certainly had a crisis in nineteen seventy-seven. <laughs> So, but it, so, he, and it is about that as well. But it's about the end of his uh, his marriage to the really. It's 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 the wife in the wall. It's that same wife um, who was uh, sort of militantly socialist, and I think she was the one who influenced him when they got all the money that they they bought a like a, a row of terraced houses and they lived in the end one. And rented out the rest of them to people from like next to nothing, and all that, which he very quickly dropped, and then started dating a some royal or something. <laughs> but I, th I think that as a concept works much better for the eighties than like the final cut and the wall, which is so un eighties. 
in, in that they're so you know one is ludicrously introspective and narcissistic and the other one is you know um well, actually, actually, a traditional rock subject. Obviously, it is, it, you know, war is bad, but not in a in a an epic stadium platitudes way, but a, a really gritty, harsh reality of it. Um, whereas this is, you know, much more eighties in that sense. Actually, strangely, um, it's not as heavy as the other two, uh, but I think it it feels like. The fourth disc of a massive concept album because it's all the, it's the same yeah <laughs> it's the same and the, the question is does it matter well it has to matter to us because we know all those other things so well don't we you know they've got they can't there we go they can see on the screen yeah well, I agree with you totally that this feels like part of the same suite almost mm-hmm. of albums um I mean, if you're presented with the wall and you're pres- presented with this, I don't know. Would you go with the wall? <laughs> I mean, the wall is such a hard subject. Exactly. Of how, are we gonna, how are we going to realise this sort of thing? But I mean, if you're Nick Mason, and Rick Wright, you're probably not that worried about that because you haven't got to worry about it because Roger Waters and yeah and David Gilmore. I'm going to worry about it. Yeah, that's true. Going to worry about it, that sort of thing. <laughs> oh yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Gilmore didn't want to do it. Steve O'Rourke, the manager, didn't want to do it either. He, they both went for pros and cons. I think you can see why. It's a much easier subject. Although, that, I mean, it is kind of... It's, it's, it's definitely a downward vibe, but it's not like... It's not like the wall, which is sort of like... <laughs> yeah, and it ends with the the the, the, um, the trial. Yeah. And, and at that point, they've heard it in its harshest form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know... This, and um, this is there's melody on here, and it's you know, it's much less extreme. So you, I, d- I do understand them going with the pros and cons. I, I do get yeah. that. Oh, just from a sheer practical, we've got to make this now point of view. Yeah, let's do the pros and cons. The wall's a nice idea. <laughs> um. <laughs> but yeah, Roger, you do that. That's fine. <laughs> That's what they should have done. But she couldn't have done. Surely, I mean, you wouldn't have got no. the. I mean, the the undertaking was was monumental. Yeah. Um, and it does make you wonder what this would have actually have been. I mean, that's the real interesting thing on this. What would this have been if they decided to do this rather than the wall? Yes, I've it's got... obviously going to be better. I mean, this isn't actually it isn't that bad. I mean, I would I would listen to this ahead of any Gilmore solo stuff. Oh, oh yeah, Jesus Christ! Yeah. I did listen to About Face released, released <laughs> the same year. I got about three songs in. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> Um, it's really boring, and the guitar was really low in the mix. Actually, it's, I think it's a lot more interesting than any of the Pink Floyd stuff post post Roger Waters. Yes, maybe not. Well, I don't. Um, I don't know. I, mm, that's a point we've never really talked about. Like the eighties Pink Floyd stuff, was it particularly well executed? I think it is well executed. I think that's what David Gilmour wanted. Yeah, that's um, what. Yeah, yeah. What, what yeah. they ended up with is what they wanted. Yeah. yeah, but it is um, vacuous. I mean, well, yeah. I suppose the argument is uh, the nice bits of Division Bell and this, and you think of the the niceness of Division Bell, the the luscious sounds. If you could have some of that on here, yeah, that, that would be nice. Yeah, because it does get a little bit tiresome. I think if it becomes well, it's not as bad as all that. I mean, no. God, we've listened to some albums, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah, I never get there Wars. on this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it is sort of like it's very, very subtle. I find it's not, it's not in your face. Whoa! And there's no in your face wall moments or anything like that. It's yes. kind of, you know, I don't know what else to say about it. Really, <laughs> it's I mean, sort the, of um, the vocals are better than the final cut. I think. Although yeah, it has been said that it was just just because it was such a hard hard thing to make with the final cut, the whole thing was just strained, but. Um, the final cut is really harsh. This doesn't. This isn't as harsh. This is actually an easier listen, I think. Well, I suppose what I sort of well, my initial feeling was because he was still in Pink Floyd when he made this. Why did he think after making this? Why did he think leaving Pink Floyd was a good thing? 
Well, it, it it turns out it wasn't that simple, and that, and to a certain extent, he was actually sort of financially forced out. In that the the Mason and Gilmore did actually force him out of the band. They the, they did whatever financial I can't remember the details the trickery that meant he had to leave. So he just agreed to it. That was the thing. So they had to force him out, did they? Yes. And they forced him out because I thought he'd sort of. He says, I'm leaving, and that's the end of Pink Floyd, uh, because I'm not in it, and therefore Pink Floyd doesn't really exist anymore. And then they turned around and said, no. We're going to carry on, yeah. 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 I wonder if I can find... Sorry, of 1985, Walters and Gilmore back from their solo campaigns. The thorny issue of Pink Floyd's future became even more pressing. Oh, then Nick Mason did his solo album. Oh, yeah, so Gilmore realised that About Face wasn't it wasn't a big hit and he had to do something and he's 39 he didn't really want to start a career as a solo artist and work his way off because no, nobody knew them now we know these these characters they're like Mick Jagger yeah. and all they're right there now but they, they weren't char- they weren't pe- people didn't know who they were you know it was just Pink Floyd um, oh and yeah Floyd were asked to play Live Aid uh, and Water said oh, I'll bring my band instead and they're like nah that's nah, alright it's alright <laughs> but Gilmore did play with Brian Ferry I remember that um, so Waters believes that the band is over uh, yeah, so, yeah so he approached Steve O'Rourke oh yeah yeah. the problem is Steve O'Rourke so Waters didn't get on with Steve O'Rourke really? and when, when Waters went to Steve O'Rourke about dissolving the band so not him leaving the band dissolving the band he went and told uh, Gilmore and Mason which sounds perfectly reasonable to me, but he didn't want. He thought he shouldn't tell them. <laughs> it should be done in secret. Dissolve the band in secret. I'm not even sure that would have been legal. Um, to complain. Yeah, and the, so yeah, so the three of them are the shareholders in Pink Floyd Music. Uh, so they, yeah, so he he did actually try and dissolve the band, and and they refused. So what would have happened? If they'd sacked Nick Mason, because he was replaced in the final cut, wasn't he? He is on the final cut. I mean, he's quite active on the final cut. He does all the sound effects. Does he? I don't mean personally. But he did, he did get replaced a, a drum. There's some things you can't play in it, and they get another drummer in. But that, I mean, that I think there's something on Atom Heart Mother. There's something on the wall, which is Steve Jeff Picaro from that band. Yeah. Yeah, everyone knows him. He's very famous, very good, very good drummer. Oh yeah, yeah. so yeah, so Waters tried to dis- dissolve the band. He didn't try and leave. He did try to dissolve the band, and and um, and Gilmore said, "No, no, we're going to make another album." <laughs> and I said, "You'll never do that. You can't make a record on your own." Um, and Waters said, "Well, I'm not leaving. I'm going to sit in the back of the studio and criticise. <laughs> He's going to do what Gilmore does to him. We'll do like that." <laughs> Right, but then, two months later, Water sent a letter to EMI saying he was leaving Pink Floyd. So he's not under contract. So he invoked the leaving members clause in his contract, which allowed him to take up a solo career uh, under the section, a section of the same contract. Right, right. So whether that's really them forcing him out or not, I'm not sure. They're, no. they're just saying, no, it's not over. Yeah, if, sure. you, if you want to do a solo project now, you, you're going to have to leave the band. Ah, right, he had to send the letter because of product commitment. They had to make an album. Um, that was that's in, It's in the contract that they had to make another album. Right. Um, so the record company could have sued them if they didn't make an album. He didn't want to make an album. I don't, I'd say he could have just said, I'll be a session player on this. Just tell <laughs> yeah, us when it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play the guitar solo. <laughs> Um, bom, 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 bom. Yeah, but okay. Here, here it is. So yeah. So what happens is, they they then threatened to sue him for potential loss of earnings because he was saying, "I'm not making an album." Well, we're not going to make an album, and they have to make an album. They're under contract to make an album. Waters is saying, "I will not make an album." So actually, when Gilmore said, well, "I'm going to make a record," he was actually bluffing at that point because then they they but they had to force him out because he was he was preventing Pink Floyd from making any more records. So they said, 
well, we'll sue you if you don't leave. Uh, because if he hadn't, obviously they would. If they they'd sued Roger for refusing to make another album for them, <laughs> they probably would have won. So it would have wiped him out financially. After all I the bloody, I can't. I can't see how they would win that. Well, it, well, the, 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 he, he, I mean, he could turn around and say, "Look, I'll be on an album, but I end, I am making it. I've done my I've done my stint. You guys <laughs> take turn. up the reins now, yeah." <laughs> Just tell me where to be and what to play. And if I can play it, I'll play it. That's if not, should... Dave, you'll have to play it. Yeah, that's what they should have done, shouldn't they? Yeah. That's yeah. what you should have done. Oh yeah, but of course the the, the the case to decide whether anyone could use the name or not uh was going to be heard in twelve months' time. So they all you know, that was the thing. That right in the middle of Momentary Daps of Reason is when that happened. And it was after that they asked him back. Did they? <laughs> yeah, they, they, when they were struggling to make momentary lots of reason, the first thing they did was they asked him, "Well, can you just come and fix our album then? <laughs> come on, come and make an album for us." After all that, <laughs> but in the end, they didn't need to. They just needed songwriters. That's all they yeah. needed. It didn't have to be a legendary album. It just needed to be an '80s corporate thing. Yeah. And that, I mean that. All of that goes back to the mid seventies when they got so much money, probably seventy five, I think. So after they've 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 toured and toured and toured and toured and toured and they've kind of made Wish You Were Here or they're making Wish You Were Here and um they've got all this money and they and they're but they're 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 smart. They're not like these rock bands. They're 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 well educated and they're not gonna do anything stupid, so they invested in this company called Norton Wolberg. Uh, which invested in all sorts of business ventures and skateboards and stuff, and it was a massive disaster, and they lost 3.3 million. Uh, but the problem was that the dodgy people at the top were um, using the money from other things to pay off the, the losses somewhere else. So they ended up losing 3.3 million, but they were liable on the tax for the 3.3 million. Which was like eighty three percent at that point, I think. So it had gone down from ninety five, and that was when. So they, they come back and they say, "Well, we've, we've got to make an album. Then we're we're fucked financially. We've we've what we thought would never happen. We've formed for it, just like all the other rock bands." Um, and Roger said, "Well, I've got two. Which one do you want?" <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's why going for pros and cons over the wall does make sense. That w- at that time. Go for the easy option. Go for the commercial sounding album. They're Pink Bloody Floyd after Animals. It's gonna sell lots. It doesn't need to be the, the next stage of, oh, you know. But I'm glad they didn't, <laughs> because well, as interesting as could, this, could, this, I'm sure it would have been great. Yeah, it could have been awesome, and but, then that could have been the springboard to the wall, if you know what I mean. So you could have had pros and cons, then the wall, and then Final Cut. Yeah three really really a trio of awesome albums yeah well I mean you know Waters could have said instead of the final cut maybe well, the final cut was kind of time critical wasn't it mm. um, maybe in, yeah in 84 he could have said well okay Dave come and play guitar on my album but it's just my album so it, it'll be easy no no you don't need to criticise and uh, instead of Clapton you know, yeah. and then that that might have helped, and then maybe they would have made another album. You never know. We've gone mm. off subject a bit, haven't we? Yeah, but yeah, yeah I mean, that 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 sort of entered into my mind, sort of like the way this one. So it didn't sell particularly well, did it? I mean, why why didn't that make Roger Waters think? Actually, I can't do this solo thing without Pink Floor or going on a solo. Going out on my own is not a guarantee of, of success. Yeah, I mean, well, it is. Well, it's a good album. It's a very personal album. It's not him, him being commercial. He said this that it's 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 an, it was this piece of work he did at the time, and that was what he artistically yeah, that, did. I mean, the wall isn't commercial. <laughs> it certainly isn't. Is it? No. <laughs> but that's massive, you know. That's sort of like a massive selling album. Yeah, but I mean, part of that is just the name and the marketing and the, 
that it sells so well at the time, but it continues to sell because it's so good. Well, I'm su I assume this doesn't. But it is, it's not that it's bad, is it? But the, the, uh, you have to remember he did, had to do the tour and everything as well. And he had to be in control of everything. So he finally, he's got 100% control. He's had, with each album, you know, from, from uh, well, kind of from, from Dark Side onwards. I mean, Gilmore didn't really contribute much writing to Dark Side, but then he obviously Wish You Were Here is when he really, ah! and then with Animals, it's very, very clear. It's kind of on Wish You Were Here as well, but obviously there's so much instrumentation on Wish You Were Here, but with Animals, it's very clear. Roger wrote some songs. He wrote all the chord progressions, etc., etc., and the band played it. But because they're great big long jams, huge swathes of the music are made by the band, aren't they? So they're not made by him because he's just going bang, bang, bang with these two notes. Um, but then with The Wall, obviously they went back to it being a Roger Waters solo album. They went back to his solo style after they got rid of Rick. You know, under construction, he's much more um, Freudian because it's got Rick Wright keys on it. And then that that's really th made by three people, isn't it? It's it's, it's um, the the guy, the guy who did Alice Cooper, uh, and he co he's got the well, he's got the co-write on um, the trial. The producer man who did the wall, him. Uh, no, I can't remember, but um, everyone knows his name, so it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so that was kind of, the wall was kind of made by three people. Um, and then with the final cut, it was much more, you've got Dave Gilmore shouting a bit, but being pushed back to the point where he refused to sing on that horrible single. Um, oh, yeah. And, and Nick Mason got the sound effects and did what he was told. So that, and, but then now with this album, he's got a hundred percent control of everything. And, and even on the tour, he's a hundred percent control of all production, lighting, everything it's just roger waters and nothing else um and apparently that was very hard <laughs> it was you. really hard <laughs> so it is straight you're right it is really strange if that's the, the the timeline he's gone on things have surely got harder to make even though there's no one arguing with him he's now it's really hard so 85 comes around and he says oh no we're not making any more pink floyd albums and they're, they're contractually bound to make more Pink Floyd albums. How did he think that was going to end? It, it, mu it must be that he just couldn't bear it. He just couldn't face doing it. That the final cut was so traumatic to make. And I, it seems odd that, that... Was Dave Gilmore really still up for it? For going through that again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he must really like money. But yeah, I mean... Right at the start, apparently they were travelling abroad. It starts with the chords from In the Flesh. Oh no! And then, and then it changes, so you're okay. And then you've got the main theme. Um, but it's not just that. I mean, you, you hear... They sound like tributes to themes. So it does sound like reprises of previous themes. But and actually, it's just using them again. A Fletcher Memorial Home comes up. Um, in Go Fishing, I think. Um, the Remains of Our Love is almost an amalgamation of things we've already heard. Um, we do have Eric Clapton uh, and Mel Collins. I mean, there's actually a bit when he play that Mel Collins plays a bit, and it sounds like um, the letters. There's a bit, a little motif from the letters, that brr, 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 and he plays it on a Roger Waters album. I thought it was brilliant. Um, Clapton. Uh, now, remember I said I listen to the live album much more now. It's much better live. And I think a lot of that is the guitar. I've never rated the guitar on here. I was so disappointed when I bought it. And it's just... It's just noodling. You know? I did find it quite bluesy, actually. I thought... Yeah. I know Gilmore is a blues guitarist. Yeah. But I could actually hear the bluesiness in this. Whereas with Pink Floyd, it doesn't feel bluesy for some reason. Yes, that's the thing. That's the weird, you know, is, well, he, Gilmore is just playing blues dicks. That's all he does, yeah. you know? But, no, it, there's some there's magic, <laughs> there is magic the there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clapton, Clapton does not have, Clapton is, and it, obviously it's a very, very nice blues guitar playing. 
and it's not attached to the music for me. And I did notice on the live one it is more so. So I don't, maybe he just knows it now, <laughs> or, you know. That, that he's just got this this angry bass player shouting at him to play play some blues. Come on, <laughs> you know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, like every stranger's eyes, which I think is the best song on there. Predictably, it's the most famous one. That's much better live because Clapton made up this, or maybe he was made up this little motif to repeat, um, which works much better than just just playing some guitar. <laughs> it's just so you know, like in there. So average. Um, the story goes, during the tour, he, he, I mean, you think he's he's picked Clapton. It sounds like a snub to Gilmore. He should have just got Gilmore and said, just it's my album, so just play the guitar, you know. And I'm, I think from their perspective, well, I've got, I'll get Eric Clapton then. He's the best guitarist in the world, you know. Um, but they, So they went out on tour. Now Roger Waters is now the king. He's finally got it. He's the king. And what would happen is every time there was a guitar solo, the, all the lighters would come out in the audience. And everyone would stand up for the guitar solo of Clapton, and then the guitar solo would finish, and they'd all sit down again. <laughs> <laughs> everyone was there to see Eric Clapton. <laughs> so apparently he sort of stormed off. <laughs> and he wasn't happy. It happened again. <laughs> uh, the the, the live—I never thought he would release these live albums. There's a, a live album. Of the next album as well, um, but it is interesting hearing the live versions because he changes the, ver the live songs. You know, he, depending on who's in his band and what he w wants to do. So he's got the guy from um, Mike Rutherford's boring band. I forgot the name. Michael the Mechanics. Michael the Mechanics. Yeah, the singer from that. So he does his like more R and B style of the songs. And there is this thing with Pink Floyd that the way you do it, and you know that. They 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 figured this out later, didn't they? In in eighty seven, eighty eight, and then in in the nineties, that you need to play it the same as the album version. You don't in the seventies they jammed the songs, obviously, but it's different and that's wrong. And that's the thing about Pink Floyd songs, and it, normally I wouldn't say that, you know. Um, but at the same time, it's interesting to hear different things rather than just the same stuff played in a in a, in a concert hall, you know. Uh, I have the as I showed you at the start. I have the original nude cover. Oh, um, so and it does seem there's censored versions as well with a, with a, with a, you know it's been blocked yeah. off. So I'm quite lucky there. I've got I've got I have the bottom, and it is of a, some porn star or something. Um, there was talk of a movie of pros and cons, like later. A proper movie, not like um, the you know the promo for Final Cut, uh, but it was never, never came out. I, I mean, I can imagine. I mean, the next album is is that's Radio Chaos. I'm talking about. It's surely more suited to a movie because it's got a story. <laughs> well, I thought that actually made the 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 notes that the 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 movie had been filmed. Yeah, or, or or maybe, and it never actually came out. No one's seen it, or it came out in bits in other things yeah because some stuff was filmed for the tour and for the music videos so they did display stuff on the in the backdrop of the tour so they had bits so I don't know if that's what actually exists yeah maybe and they, they never really made the movie but it would have been Radio Chaos I suspect they didn't do Radio Chaos because it just wasn't ne neither album was that big and by the end of the 80s neither album was really much loved so that's I would think that's probably why. Yeah, so it's five eggs because it is really good. It's a Roger Waters album, of course it is. Out of context is the problem. You have to take it out of context. So you've got to wait for the moment when you're not thinking about the final cut or the wall. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just more, and it's not. It's not actually as good as either of those albums, although it is more easy to listen to. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely easier to listen to. I'm not going to egg it. Okay, we do not egg these here. Um, yeah, so we're not doing When the Wind Blows. I only realised today that that's the thing. I'd forgotten about it. Because that's a different project and it's got David Bowie on it and stuff. It's not a next Roger Waters album. The next Roger Waters album is Radio Chaos. So that is what we are reviewing next week. Ooh. 
This is about time we did these albums. Yeah, it is actually. It is weird we've not done them. Yeah. Defo. Anything else to say about the pros and cons of hitchhiking by Dave Gill? Um, nah. I think we've talked quite a lot there, Kev. We must have done. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's quite a long review. Some of it was me reading a book. But yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. cool. See you next Radio time. Radio Chaos.